At this point, all of the gear blanks have been turned down to size except for this very large one that's mounted here. This one is about six inches in diameter. Um, it won't fit on my lathe. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm using the milling machine as a lathe and if you think about it for a minute, um, if you turned a lathe on its side, you'd, um, it would look like a milling machine <laughs> or vice versa. Uh, this, of course, is the spindle with, the, with what is the z-axis on the mill and if this were lying on its side it would still be the spindle with the z-axis on the lathe and this acts as the cross slide coming into the part. Um, the setup is essentially the same as though you were on the lathe, it's just that obviously the mill um, gives me much more room to, to work on a larger piece like this. Um, Everything has been um, set up so that um, you know I, I, I used a, a DTI on uh, on the spindle here to make sure that it was you know running exactly um, round with the with the spindle, um, lining the. Um, you can see I've got my regular lathe cutting bit uh, cutting tool. But it's simply mounted in the vise. Um, it still needs to be at the center line. But what I did was I just lined it up against the back of here. Um, you know, just had it touch off on the back of here, and then adjusted it to the to the midway point. So that, of course, is the center line. Um, so other than that, I mean, this is a lathe that's just sitting on its side. I um, I actually used the the Mach three. Uh, lathe wizard to come up with the g-code to run this. Um, the only thing you have to keep in mind is that it has to be in radius mode instead of in diameter mode because of just the way the, the, the mill operates. But um, Or you can write your own g-code or you can do this with MDI commands. It's really up to you how you get to that, to that point. So. Um, Um, let's see how it works. Just like when I did this on the lathe, uh, you have to cut air in the beginning because the blanks, again, were cut on a bandsaw, they're certainly not perfectly round. So you don't want to be making too aggressive a cut coming into it, but um, it's just now beginning to cut. Um, And it's working just like a lathe, and I did not test this off camera, this is... <laughs> I'm seeing this for the first time just as I am, but uh, a friend of mine, uh, David, pointed out uh, to me that uh, you could do this trick, so um, I can't take credit for originality here, but um, it certainly works. All right, I've um, I've changed the cutting depth to just one thousand at a pass, um, which I think will be a lot better. And I've bumped up the spindle to uh, twelve hundred RPM.
<laughs> that seems to be a lot more forgiving now. Now that we're beyond um, making interrupted cuts, you can see that it's, it's going nice and smoothly. And this is really the same effect I was having on the lathe before. It's just that this is so much larger in diameter. The, uh, uh, the interruption is, you know, much more noticeable here. But um, I don't know of any way of getting around that. Um, and like I said, it's fine now. I I stopped the camera and took some measurements and uh, everything is proceeding as it was supposed to. So The job just finished up and uh, I'm going to take a final measurement here. It's 5.8955, nope, 5.896. Point eight nine six, which is exactly where it's supposed to be. So that's the final two blanks that um, needed to be cut. I'll take them off here and then we'll change the setup over and we'll start cutting some teeth.